I think comedy can spring from truth. I think that um, I think that the things that are funniest to people are probably things that they can relate to. So in that way, I would definitely say yes. I mean, you see a sitcom where somebody you know like leaves the stove on. That's funny because you've left the stove on. It's not funny because you're like, oh, this poor person is done. It's only funny because you've done it. So I think in a lot of ways, comedy can spring from truth. I think comedy also springs from the absurd though. I think from things that would never happen to you and it's also ridiculous. So while I think it's a fair statement that comedy springs from truth, I think that there's so much more to it than that. And that's really just making it too broad. No, I don't, I don't feel that comedy springs from truth whatsoever or commitment or really just being serious about anything. It's really, it just happens. It's so very easy to do. Uh, it's, I mean, Steve Martin was very wrong. Comedy is not deadly serious business whatsoever. I'm being facetious. It's not, it's actually really easy. Not as hard. It's very, don't do it. Ever. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Homer Simpson would say, it's funny because it's true. Um, I know a lot of comedy springs from truth, especially, I mean, stand-ups, most of their, everything they do is because people are laughing because they're like, ha, that's so true, things like that. Um, a lot of the humor, for example, in Dungeon Master, uh, we tend to gather a lot of people who uh, have some knowledge of gaming or fantasy, tropes, things like that, and uh, when we make fun of that, especially, they, they, they love it, like little inside jokes or, or to see the, the truth inherent in something. If you can relate to something is especially more memorable. Dungeon Master was, this is gonna sound silly, but it was really very magical for me to find Dungeon Master. I found the show at a time when I didn't really know what I was doing anymore in LA. I mean, I had just wrapped this film in April and that was great, but I think that I just really missed the stage. You know, you, you, you walk away from that for so many years after that really being essentially where you were born and, um, and you lose something. So when I found Dungeon Master, it was really magical, not only because I got to be back on stage and because I got to improv, but because I think for the first time since I moved to LA, I found a group of people that were essentially the same as me. I mean, they were actors who really wanted to make it, but they weren't so involved with the politics and the bull crap of all of it that they forgot to be human beings. You know, these were great, wonderful people that I would just look forward to seeing, you know, every time. And when I wasn't seeing them, I was like bummed. Just like, oh, they're on a show this Sunday. Um, so it was really special to me in a lot of ways, not just because of the show aspect, but because I finally found this group of people that I liked in LA, which was so hard before. Uh, I think the best part about Dungeon Master is, again, the audience participation aspect. Um, I, I had a unique, sort of unique, um, experience with the show in that I came the first month that it was on here in LA. It's been going here for about 10 years. And um, pretty much from the first show, I was like, I can get on stage and do whatever I want. And I was hooked. Like, especially if you're an audience member, you just come with an idea and a concept. And uh, I, I was doing improv uh, at other theaters, and I would just like kind of carry over things into the Dungeon Master show or take stuff from Dungeon Master and carry it into um, other shows that I was doing. Um, and, then when I, and then when I became part of the cast... Um, it was, uh, it was good to sort of be on that end and having a knowledge of, of what, what they're expecting when they come in and what they would like in a show uh, certainly helped. And the fact that we are able to put on a show rehearsing it the same day as the show. Um, we do, everyone is original, so each, each show is pretty much written. We rehearse it, we put it on, and, uh, and somehow another amazing aspect is that everybody's able to make it coalesce into a show that people actually watch and can believe in the characters that they're watching. I, I absolutely love Dungeon Master. I was introduced to it a few years ago through a friend who was in the cast. Uh, sadly, she's no longer with us. Uh, she's in Canada. Um, but I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a great idea. I would jump on stage and goof around and make kind of a, a jerk of myself constantly. Um, and then, for some reason, I thought I'd audition for it, and I absolutely loved the idea of the show. It's such a cool idea. You know, it's interactive. Uh, because being an audience member in an improv show, you want nothing more to do than jump up and be funny. You know, because you think of ideas, you think of things. So it's great as an audience member that you get to jump up and play around. Uh, so I love the idea of the show. It's a lot of fun uh, with some awesome people. My favorite character in a moment. 
Hmm. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm honestly rather fond of Diggins. I think he's kind of fun. Uh, I've been playing around with his character. He's getting kind of snarky. Kind of a little, not too insulting, but enough where it's like, don't mess with Diggins, because he might just hurt your feelings. Um, I really, really enjoy him. I was also Rog, the demon of the fifth plane, and he was just a lot of fun because he sounded like a Muppet. I don't know, I really liked playing the drow. That was pretty fun. Maybe it's because I got to kick some butt and that was cool. Um, I mean, but the character was fun. It's always fun to play an evil character. I know I had favorite moments. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think my favorite moment might have been in the first show uh, when Mike had stepped in for Tanya's character and um, we were putting like these bracelets on everybody because they were supposed to be like brought into custody because we were like, they were under arrest. So we got like essentially like the glow sticks that you snap and like you put them on his bracelets, but they didn't go together. They kept falling off. So instead of like them being around their necks, like they were supposed to be like one person had like a lapel, you know, and one person had like a bracelet and one person was just kind of holding it. And it was hysterical because this went on for like five minutes while we were trying to make everything fit and it's my first show and Mike is just making it like the most hysterical thing that's ever happened ever and I think the audience wouldn't have liked it any other way it was I don't know that was just really funny to me maybe just because I was standing there in the moment and it was ridiculous but I say one of my favorite parts we love to tell everybody about about um, one of our uh, old actors uh, Billy Campbell from the Rocketeer um, he uh, he actually started in Dungeon Master many years ago as that was his first acting thing and, and when I started up again in LA he came back, um, but he was also busy with another show, uh, here and here and again, or here and now, or something. I forgot. And um, so he didn't have a lot of time. He came to the show once, and we gave him a script, and he looked over the first scene. He was like, "Okay, I have this character. Oh, I'll throw on a robe, and I don't have to talk much. I'm tired." So he just he pretended to be a mute telepath. I don't know how he came up with that. And he was just holding a fish because he's crazy. And then uh, in the course of the scene, of course, they pointed to him and they're like. We want you to lead a party to discover blah, 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 whatever the main plot point was. And he was like... And so he had no idea what the show was. He didn't read the script because he didn't know he was in the entire show. Uh, he then managed to get through the show without ever talking, uh, merely because he was a telepath, and he would walk up to the other actors and go... And then they would say, Ah, you're journeying for da-da-da! And he'd be like, Oh, yes, yes. And uh, that's possibly... We love telling that story over and over because it was just genius to watch him actually look competent as he went through a show he had no idea what was going on.